When I was in high school, I had this idea of what success looked like, and it definitely included my name and lights. I wanted to be like the people I had seen on TV and read about in books, and I believed that would be me so much so that I refused to be in my senior yearbook or take my senior pictures. You see, I didn't want anyone to be able to look back and say they knew me when, as if somehow they'd contributed to my success. As you can imagine, when I told my mom, she was furious. She loaded me up in the car and took me down to the local Sears, where I got to experience the joy of department store photography. On this side of things, I wish I could tell you that that embarrassing moment shifted something in my heart and my head, but the reality is it didn't. I spent most of my 20s chasing after that same picture of success. Instead, the shift happened for me unexpectedly. It happened when a 17-month-old boy with curly blonde hair and these big, scared eyes toddled into my front door. I had stepped in the world of foster care voluntarily through becoming a foster parent, and for the first time in my life, I stepped into these shoes that were way too big for me. Shoes that I didn't understand at the time would carry me on the path from pride to humility. The next three years were a blur. I went from being a mom of two to a mom of seven. We moved from a car to a minivan to a 12-passenger van. And in the thick of the chaos, I decided to start a nonprofit to help more kids in foster care. Not because I was chasing after that picture of success, no. You see, that picture of success has a way of fading in the eyes of a child left behind. My name in lights takes on significantly less meaning when you learn that there are kids sleeping in offices, newborns leaving hospitals only to be placed in group homes and shelters, experiencing kids being ripped from all they've ever known to find out there's no bed for them, no one waiting to walk through the pain with them. There are so many things that I learned on my journey of foster care. But one of great significance is that life is never done alone. When I started fostering, my husband was there, our families were there. There were foster moms who lent me their shoulders that allowed me to not just survive but thrive, having seven kids six and under. When I started Foster Arizona, my first two calls was to my videographer friend James and to my husband Brian. And both of them gave me their shoulders. Then I called every person that became the board of Foster Arizona. I asked them to bring their skills. I asked them to bring their very hearts. More shoulders. I reached out to businesses, churches, nonprofits, family, friends, friends of friends, and time after time, they gave me their shoulders. Imagine how different my story would be if their shoulders were empty. Brandon has a family. They saw his smiling face playing with Legos in one of our videos, asking for a mom to make him cookies. Brandon has a mom to make him cookies because James said yes and more videographers followed. Jordan, Elvia, Eric, they're no longer gripped by the fear of homelessness that's so often associated with young adults that are leaving foster care. Instead, they have jobs and go to school. We celebrate first cars, increased credit scores, and getting the keys to their first apartments. Why? Because the board gave me their shoulders. This community gave me their shoulders. If you have been a part of a family, if you have attended school or extracurricular activities, if you have worked with someone or had someone who worked for you, I am here to tell you, you are not self-made. I am not self-made. 
We live and breathe by the shoulders in which we're allowed to stand. That is the beauty of community. That is the beauty of taking your talents and your energy and multiplying it by the talents and the energies of others. Understanding that life was never meant to be lived alone and finding the shoulders worth standing on. I am sure there are many of you that have dreams as big as mine or even bigger. And I want to challenge you to think differently. Think collectively. And I want to encourage you with these three things that helped me on my journey. First, be selective. Not everyone will make you better, wiser, or stronger. The best people challenge you. They inspire you, and oftentimes, they are smarter than you. They see the vision, and they want to see you succeed because they see it as we succeed. Second, be humble. When I am humble, it allows me to see the strengths that you bring to the table as an opportunity instead of a threat. And it makes me excited for what you can bring to the table, how you will enhance the team. Number three, be grateful. I get to wake up every day knowing that the work that I'm a part of makes real impact in the lives of others but it's not about me. I wish I could go back and tell that 17-year-old girl, the one refusing to be in the yearbook, that someday the impact you will make will be far greater than the sum of your parts. I am standing here today on thousands of shoulders. Who has been that for you? And in turn, Who will you allow to stand on your shoulders? Imagine what could be in our community if no one's shoulders were empty. Thank you.